Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adept is Ridiculous podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky, and we're going to be learning about just some absolutely, I'm assuming, horrid stuff in Warhammer 40k, but before we do, if you enjoyed today's episode, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen, the $15 tier gets you all of our digital HD posters, including that new Detective Ridiculous Beast of Jevudan poster, Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, how do you feel about the... Wuss, w- is, would you say that's a that's a case of wuss... Because it's a wolf? Wow. I, I didn't know where you were going to go with that, but that was far worse than I thought you were going to say. I Let's do not go. like that. Let's go, baby! I do not like those words that you just said to me one bit. Let's go, baby. Um, yeah, I, I do not make these posters, yet I will profit off of them. Hell yeah. It is available also at the merch store at Orchidate.com. The... Uh, w- w- the... W- uh, is now available for purchase at the Orchidate store. As per the usual, there are 200 copies that you may grab. Grab them while they're hot. And also, <laughs> um, uh, that and, hot and, uh, and also, uh, you know, check out all the other stuff. A lot of great mm. stuff. Shirts, hoodies, flags, stickers, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And, and Master of Mankind. I was just about to say that, damn you. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I will beat your ass and eat Got your him. ass. Ooh, hey, whoa, hey, let's not. Don't threaten you with a bad time. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. It could be a bad time. You don't know how it's going to be. Yeah, I meant, could be. I meant if it literally. If you're a cannibal, that would be a bad time. Yeah, yeah. I meant it literally, obviously. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, all right. This, we're off to a pretty good start, I'd say. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. So, uh, in lovely fashion of Bricky is going to get to just kind of casually schmooze through a few episodes and then uh, not anymore. Uh, we're going to be doing our final episode on this fun little Xenos book. Ooh, right. With Drake? With Drake. There is a Drake. plenty. And, and don't forget his great friend, the Crute Drek. Ah, yes, Drek. Drek. Um, so there is a, actually even more that we could do from what I have right here. It's, it's a very long book, but I grabbed a few interesting ones and some fun stuff and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the side Xenos races that have kind of popped up and out and ar- around the world of 40K and the humorous stories that go along with him telling it. Okay, let's do it. This so isn't going to be another Katachin episode, is it? I mean, I sh- I sh- if I had my way, it certainly would be, but... <laughs> I was going to say, if you had your way, every episode would be a Katachin episode. Be a lot more guard going on, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sisters. And sisters. Mm-hmm. So I have about 11 or so things oh. to talk about before uh, for this episode. How long that takes us, I don't know. But considering the amount that we've done so far, I think that the next episode after this one, probably going to have to be a pretty strong one. So we'll see what that oh. means. It probably, it probably means another Space Marine episode. Most likely, oh, well, but. that's okay. I There's still a couple of Space Marine factions that we haven't talked about that I'm sufficiently hyped about. True. You know, Raven Guard with their big stupid jump jets. True, yeah. true. Oh, it might, we might do the Vash Store book, actually. Oh, is that out? I, I'm I, not sure what the release date on all those books are. I think uh, it's for I, pre-order, but comes out f- Saturday. I know they've just recently showed off that Farsight book and that Farsight mini, which is just... Mm. The, new, the new Farsight mini is pretty cool. It's not oh, just yeah. tactical rocks. It's tactical cherry blossoms. <laughs> and that's lovely. I, the, my favorite post on that was someone was like, oh, I appreciate the restraint of whoever did the professional painting to show off that mini because they did not paint the blossoms as cherry blossoms. Right, they painted them as something a little different. Yeah, they're only white blossoms, like what, white and green or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, so the first one we have here is the Yurguls. 
the your, Yurgles. Yurgle, Yurgles. U R dash G H U L S. Yurgles. Oh. They are. They have a funny name. They're known as the Gala Troglodytes. <laughs> those damn troglodytes. I find I find the word troglodyte to just be one of those more enjoyable oh. insults. Oh, it's so great. It's that so and great. Homunculus. Homun- homunculus isn't so much an insult. That's just like a, a, an alchemy spiel, right? Or at least I think it is, because that's what they used in Full Metal Alchemist. But that, yeah. Did the dad in Full Metal Alchemist do anything wrong? Oh, <laughs> you're talking about who I think you're talking about. Yeah, he, he did. He did a couple things wrong. Um, you know, experimentation on your wife, child, and dog is is all eh, heavily frowned upon. Yeah, even in it, even in anime world. But was it for the greater good, DK? No, actually, I don't believe anything good came out of his, his experimentations. Oh, lovely. Anyway, these are the your goals. <laughs> um, now, oh my God, is that them? That is them right there. Yeah. Oh, I actually man. didn't know they had a mini. That's that's kind of fun. Um, the Yurgle. So the Blackstone Fortress is, for the most part, in the overarching lore of 40k, a complete mystery of its origins. It is said in in some old fluff that it was made by the old ones uh, in the fight against the Necrons, which would somewhat parse because Blackstone is a big part of the Necrons architecture and things like that. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. However, at the moment, I do think that despite it being heavily hinted at and having some old lore and stuff, we do not know their origins. They are mysterious beyond measure. So they just kind of showed up and caused problems? No, more like they were already there and they were just found. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, the your so therefore, because they have wandered for so long and so far, species have ended up arriving in it, living in it, and adapting to it for a very long time. Okay. Um, the most common threat aboard the Blackstone that Mr. A Rogue Trader Drake has encountered have been, indeed, the Yurgles. Um, okay. The Yurgles are a, like, as you can see, they're kind of hunched humanoids uh, that look like flayed, reanimated corpses. Their skin mm-hmm. looks like it's been peeled off the bone of that weird kind of hewish cadaverous color. Yeah, I was going to say they look kind of like ghouls. Yeah. They look yeah. very ghoulish, fact, which, is an, which an, is an apropos name. Add an O, and it's literally your ghouls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what's now, with their faces? Like, what's with those little... Because those aren't eye holes. Those are just like... You'd almost think those were like four nostrils. Like, obviously, I'm assuming they're blind, and like, are they kind of like that primal sort of they use uh, scent and hearing to uh, track their prey or something? DK... Or sorry, Shy, uh, DK is he's getting a little bit too smart for his own good. I think we need to replace him. Let's go, baby! He's Let's get, go! He's starting to understand the worlds a little bit too much. We need someone dumber. Big brain, boy! Let's go! So, don't forget, I was the one who came up with... Wo- <laughs> I don't know if me being smart is something you really have to worry about. You know? Yes, those are five nostrils. Let's go! Shai says we got multiple comments on the previous episode asking DK to chill down with the horny because it's getting weird. And then now we have this opening to this episode. Uh-oh. Lovely. Well, Lovely, DK. Lovely. So, 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 sorry. Good. Anywho, the interesting thing about the year goal is not the fact that, I mean, what they are is not too astounding. They're a bit tough. They run real fast and they will just absolutely rip you to shreds. They've got big... Uh, often retractable claws or, or just clawed hands, and they just will just tear you to bits. Um, yeah, how- they, they look like they would, yeah. However, there is an interesting book that is referred to as the Pharmacopol... Co- oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, boy. Pharmacopolium Xenomalium, uh, which claims to have an answer to the threat. It states in the second chapter of his treatise that the teeth of a Drukhari Archon... Worn as a necklace or bracelet will instill terror in it and leave it fawning like a whipped cur. Wow. Mm hmm. I mean, it is good. Good luck getting that. But so apparently um, there would. So there, there is a, a bar. 
basically, and in a like, kind of stationed outside of this black stone fortress. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called press. Oh, sorry, not a bar. It's a station outside this black stone fortress that people ge- generally go to before investigating the fortress. It's kind of like a port town, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called Precipice. <laughs> nice um, name. Okay. Which is often where, uh, you know how the guy spoke to the Jukari guy, Archon? Oh, yeah. And we were wondering how a Humi talked to an Archon without getting absolutely obliterated. This this is the kind of area. This um, port town, this precipice place, has a uh, major ceasefire in terms of firearms because it's uh, basically punishment is like execution. Um, okay. And it's a it's a big one. You think think of it like a pirate's den, where oh, yeah, right, a Drakari right. Archon is maybe there, but like if he kills someone, the entire den is going to turn on him. I, you know, it, I would still I'm still shocked that a Drakari would would have the restraint. Well, funny enough, you say that. Um, it says during his conversation with this Drakari Archon, he mentioned a hate uh, Drake mentioned a hatred of Urgul's to entreat how the uh, Archon would respond. He nodded to one of his attendants who, to my amazement, fetched one of the wretched creatures into the saloon of his ship. The Archon huh. gave the creature a... Oh, into the saloon of his ship. He might be on his ship instead. Mm. doesn't really matter. Not, not the point. Whatever, yeah. The Archon gave the creature a command, and incredibly, the Urgul responded, hunkering down, and uh, as in, like, uh, like hunkering down next to him. Like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Uh, the Archon sneered and boasted that humanity lacks the true spirit of command. We are too squeamish to rule, he declaimed. Seeing that I was unimpressed, the Archon patted his repulsive pet and whispered in its ear. It leaped across the saloon and ripped a guard's throat out. <laughs> the next few moments were filled with a hideous snorting and gulping as the creature fed. The Jukari leant forward in their seats, watching the display eagerly until the Yurgul dragged its meal away. The violence was clearly intended to shock and impress me, but it only reaffirmed my belief that the Eldar are a tragic, deluded race in thrall into their indictions. Okay, so he has a very, uh, he he kind of feels about the Eldar the way you do. They're just kind of, ugh. Well, guys. The, the, the delusional things come from the Jukari. Oh, no, that's true, that's true, that's true. Jukari delusional, the- regular Eldar, not so much, yeah. Wait. Oh, Shy, you, uh... There's actually rules for the damn guys? Apparently. I mean, I know there's a model, but I didn't think that, uh... Huh. Well, now you got now you got me wondering. And now you got me wondering if I, if I had accidentally grabbed a, uh... Accidentally grabbed a genuine model. It seems like you did. I might have. I, I mean, because there are a couple other ones in here. The Jukari Pets and Beastmasters are absolutely a, a thing in game. Um, they have like flocks of razor wing crow kind of things and stuff like that. But, huh. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll give that a look in a moment. Uh, Wahapi does not seem like it wants to load for me right now. Okay. Um, okay. The next creature we have is the Terra Squirrel. The the Terra Squirrel? The you Terra say? Squirrel. Oh, okay. I, at first, I thought you were going to say Pterodactyl or some sort of. Pterosaur, but the Terra Squirrel. Okay, Terra tell me about squirrel. the squirrel. So the squirrel is basically just available all across the galaxy. It is a squirrel. It is a squirrel that appear like these okay. fun, fluffy, harmless rodents that are in forest regions, basically, and they are able to fly with like flying squirrel kind of stuff. You know, they got like uh-huh. the little wings um, through the use of the, they have like a fur covered membrane. You know, it's a flying squirrel, basically. Oh, like a sh- sugar glider kind of thing. D- does do they have like razor sharp teeth and land on your throat and like bite your head off or something? Like it's just a squirrel. It sounds like you're referencing uh, uh, what is it? The the killer bunny from Monty Python. Uh, nope. I I I I was just trying to think of the most horrific squirrel I could because it's 40k. Well, the squirrel is actually kept as a pet for quite a few things, and it's a pretty standard-looking squirrel. Apparently, though, sometimes, randomly, and yes, that is official art right there. Whoa! That thing is horrific! So, occasionally, it will basically enter some form of expedited evolution, 
and incredibly quickly mutate into a feral carnivorous state in which it will immediately grow its uh, teeth and claws and murder you, like just and murder you and eat you. Whoa, that that looks like a hybrid between a squirrel and a bat. It's that a, is nuts. Feels like it's it's one of those things where it's just having it. It's like a time bomb. And it will just yeah. instantly turn into this horrifying, frenziable, murderous thing. Is there any way to see when it's about to frenzy, or is it just it just kind of does it whenever? Because if you could if you could pick, then it's like, oh, this thing's about to go frenzy. Let me throw it at my enemy or something. But uh, not one hundred percent sure. Uh, there is a great little excerpt um, uh, by Rain and Rouse, which are the two um, um, not halflings. I'm already forgetting the name. I wanted to call them halflings, though I know they're not ha- ratlings. Ratlings. Yes, um, ratlings. And uh, I gotta be honest, these two guys sound really funny. They kind of okay. have this like um, two dude vaudeville show kind of vibe. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. So they have a little excerpt here. It's like um, they're talking about how their rations were really bad. And it's like, in those situations, Rouse and me have always found it best not to pester the officers. They're always so busy with strategic thinking and the like. They don't want to hear about our bellies, do they? They do not, Rain. Pat's stomach. Remember that time we tried to show them? Rain. Grimaces and touches a scar on his jaw. Brother, I do. That's why we're always dealing with our matters ourselves. No need for the top brass to know. Besides, our mothers didn't raise us to ask for handouts. Rouse, gesturing to his small stature. She didn't really raise us at all. Ah, uh, they they do sound quite humorous. I they, they I, I like these fun. these uh, vaud. I always call them vaud villains because there was a WWE tag team called the Vaud Villains, and they were that's that's a baller uh, tag aesthetic. team name. They were they were very fun. They were bad guys, but yeah yeah. Well, the bad guys are often the most enjoyable. We are playing 40k after all. Fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, they sound they sound like a hoot. But yeah, people like their exotic uh, terror squirrel pets, and then eventually it grows up and kills them. I mean, like if if it if it didn't grow up and eat you, like if it was like, oh yeah, it'll grow up and then it trusts you and it'll do your bidding. I could totally see wanting to own one of these, but if it's just gonna eat your face, I I feel like maybe maybe don't maybe maybe not maybe don't do it. You're, you're not understanding the the volume of hubris that extremely wealthy, <laughs> high level people have on a uh, of over in in the Imperium. I guess that's true. And you, yeah, and also wild animals will kill you anyway. Like if you, you know, people who are like I'm gonna raise a chimpanzee oh. and then like tore that lady's face off. Yeah, or like a baboon, or like oh, I'm just gonna raise this tiger. I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, next one we have is the Loxatil, or Loxel. The uh, this is a kind of bizarre Xenos race. It is reptilian in nature, quite large, sometimes ten feet long, as a, as a quadruped that evolved from a species kind of similar to monitor lizards. Um, oh, so kind of like an axolotl. That probably is actually where the name. Yeah, because they're from. called lottles or something, right? Loxatil. So, Loxata, yeah, it's probably from an axle. Whoa, those are cool. So these things are a little bit more intelligent than your average lizard kind of thing. Um, they're a gun kind vest? Of, they, they have a gun vest, yep. <laughs> um, they, have, they have a vest with guns. So they are often seen bearing projectile weaponry attached to their torso and are able to deal with enemies at a pretty significant distance. Uh, okay. Often employed as like uh, often employed by like mercenaries and things like that. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that they have an echolocation gland that can be used from genuine miles away. Ooh, um, that's handy. And so when you have this like location and someone's walking around, then you can it turns around and fires its chest gun at like the creature, <laughs> however long down the line it is, and then they blow up and die. Wow. Is that the I'm assuming the echo locator thing is that sort of uh, red patch on the side of its head? I'm actually not sure, but I would believe you. Yeah, I, would, it, I, would I, believe I think that, it's just yeah. the, the lizards biology gives it a weird mm-hmm. like echolocation thing. That picture um, kind of makes it look like a xenomorph almost. A little bit. I think it's the dark color. Yeah, probably. It's is that from a game, Shy? 
It's very cool, though. I, I, I like uh, Gun Vest Lizard. This, gun that's, that's Vest a cool, Lizard. That's a, it's a cool look. Um... So the the thing is, it, in the expeditions with Drake, uh, he found that in order to deal with something for such an insane range is to actually overload its senses uh, with a certain frequency. So okay. because of their echolocation, they kind of have like a dog whistle thing where humans oh. can't hear it, but, the, but they can. The lizards can, yeah. So he was able to play a frequency at an extremely high, high, um, well, I guess frequency, and that immediately sent this lizard into an absolute f- frenzy, like flipping on its back and just writhing around like it was being attacked by many, many attackers. Yeah. yeah. And then by then he walked up and just went. I wonder how they fire the, the vest gun. With their vest. Yeah, but like, what are they just like flex their? Wait a second. It's finally here, DK. We found it. The investigator. Oh, my God. It's there. We finally figured it out. Yes, yes. The, you, we have a vested interest in this topic, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, but not with these crocodile circumstances. <sighs> that was bad. It was even, bad. Even this... for me, that's like, I mean, and my puns are not good. My jokes, not good, but that was awful. This makes up for those horrendous puns you made like three episodes ago that were just the worst they were glorious they sucked and you know it excuse you i did not even sneeze why would so what's the next xenos race bricky (laughs) next one we have are the amble a-m-b-u-l-l okay so these things i like the the first line some threats humanity only has itself to blame (laughs) <laughs> okay so this is a oh, sweet man-made horrors beyond comprehension oh sweet lois a schizo <laughs> thread <laughs> oh no so the amble Beta. there you go that's the amble oh my god what i can't even it, is that i guess it's a it looks like a giant insect insect beast thing insect beast rock thing so the amble is originally in a completely inhospitable desert uh, winding up in subterranean caves where it would have lived and died if humanity didn't get involved because rich nobles love to try and domesticate things. Of course. Also, oh my God, look at that mini. Wow. Actually, Holy pretty, moly. <laughs> it's actually a pretty good mini. I'm a little shocked. Yeah, that thing is amazing. Imagine meeting that in a dark alleyway. Oh. It is, uh, it's, oh. It's, it's a big boy. It's a yes. big boy. Big, chunky, muscular, insect, hive, tryptophobia. Night- is it trypto? I always say that Tripophobia. Wrong. Tripophobia, yeah. So... It is very large, about up to 13 feet tall, as a bipedal, uh, bipedal predator with the posture, kind of like an ape. Uh, mm-hmm. Those arms, you know, kind of hit the ground, and so they, they move like an ape and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it can eat almost anything, tunnel at extreme speeds, and are impossible to bargain or reason with. They're, they're not something that you would try. Oh, to, to yeah, stop. I can't imagine having... <laughs> I don't think this thing would stop and have a conversation with you. No, no. So there was a situation in which some Vostroyan guardsmen, Vostroyan mercenaries, decided to try to tame it and grabbed one uh, on their ship uh, oh. and then head to the precipice area, the, um, the, the bar kind of, or the port city. Yeah. Um, however, however, I'm doing so, it, of course, got loose. Of course. And, uh, oh, I, I believe they were actually, um, oh yeah, yeah, it got loose and immediately started just murdering all kinds of things, leaving yeah. to all kinds of rivalries and stuff and people murdering each other in a, in basically a riot. Oh um, boy. Yeah. I don't know why you would try and capture one of these things. I mean, I guess you figured you could tame it and use it to your betterment, but oh, it also, does it, does it like have its own little bug army that comes out of those little holes that it just sends after you and gives you some horrifically noxious poison with? I don't know anything about that. I think it just crushes you. 
or or eat, there are, or eat you there are, with the big mandibles. Because with the mini, there are clearly bugs like falling off of it near those holes. So I wasn't sure if that was like a special deal. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, there are definitely okay. bugs on it, though. You are correct. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is a big bug. It's like a big muscular gorilla bug. So uh, these Vostroyans decide that after it got loose to try to fix it by destroying it with a pair of plasma charges, like plasma grenades, mm-hmm. um, which was apparently very dumb because ambles feed on anything, including plasma. Oh, no. <laughs> it just ate it. It literally just ate the plasma from the plasma grenades. The, the f- blast of the plasma fueled the creature's hunger and ferocity with energy sparking across its carapace, and it butchered all of the Vostroyans oh. in order to try to get at the delicious, delicious plasma. So Drake grabbed oh. the final plasma charge and ran away into their ship, in which the Amble chased after him, and he threw the plasma charge into the ship, smashed the launch, and jumped out and sent the ship and the Amble half a mile into deep space. I mean, that's that's a nice little bait and switch. So, yeah, good good, good for you, Drake. I shall oh. decline the comment on the suggestions that I knew several Vostroyans were still aboard. <laughs> I like that. I mean, I ha- he had to get rid of the Amble, so, you know, if you got to sacrifice a couple of guards, I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do. They brought it in. They're the ones at fault. Oh, yeah. They, you know, you reap what you sow. You get what you fucking deserve, Murray. So the next one is something called the Mjordheim Raiders. Oh, hold on. Shy, oh. tell me to wait. What also, are we waiting Mjordheim for? Mjordheim Raiders sounds like it's going to be some sort of uh, Norse deal. Don't forget about the two awesome versions of the Amble, the Cyber Amble and the Ambot. Oh, no. Is there a mecha version of this awful nightmare? Uh, you Cyber, to, you, yeah, you read this. Sure. Cyber ambles are equipped with toothed power saws and hammer drills, which are slotted into grooved elbow chunks that replace the ambles original forearms. The cyber ambles are also given plate steel reinforced orbits around their eyes Twin torches welded to their brow ridges and a nose and a noise suppression field. Oh God! As if these things weren't awful enough without cyber. T- also, who, who did this? Who who did that? Who 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 put who 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 who. Who? Oh, so, oh, it's the squats. Squat engineers can ride atop the cyber ambles in order to directly control them. Their seats are located upon the cyber ambles lower back, just behind a bulging spur of polished spine bone that contains control knobs. The engineers can all ride the cyber ambles to war, and the ambles antler bracket is used to carry a heavy bolter. Huh. Wow. Oh my god. Wait, these don't Holy. look like they were made from ambles, but rather are just like a a construction that looks like an amble. Yeah, the, yeah, that looks. Are yeah, like bots are. Yeah, those minis just look like they are things that look, look like they're vaguely designed around. Um, yeah. Oh, they use an amble's brain to build the. Ooh. Oh, that's like not a it. smart idea. I don't that, like this. I, I feel like that's such a bad idea. Damn, this is a big creature. Let's make it a robot. Wow, that's a cool robot, though. You, got, I gotta say, like, that robot is aesthetic as hell. I did not realize. That they were I l- love it. So, onwards to the Mjordan Raiders. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drake apparently met a someone called a Thusilian queen who was very, and obviously he's always interested in Zeno's life form. So she, as a proud woman, invited him to dine with her at her estate, whatever the place is, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, after uh, her, they prepared a quite impressive meal, they, he saw a piece of what looked like unfired clay uh, with unusually long tapered fingers. And that the queen said that the crumbling hand was not, in fact, tribal art, but a severed piece of a creature known as a Mjordheim. 
Uh, and that okay. many centuries ago, her ancestors were hunted almost to extinction by these raiders and their winged serpent steeds. Ooh. Now, I like this part where he's like, the enormous hand was obviously made from some sort of clay, but it's never wise to dismiss the long cherished cultural beliefs of one's host, especially when they are about to feed you. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, that is the drawing recognition of the uh, Mjordheim raiders there. It is Whoa. a cyclopean kind of creature upon a, a serpent dragon. Oh, nice. I love me a good cyclops. And uh, oh, wow, that's so cool. The uh, the queen had actually asked how they managed to defeat the Mjordheim of General because they are incredibly strong. They are nomadically heavily muscled giants, uh, quote, uh, born of the earth, require neither food nor water to live, uh, oh. and are basically unkillable in terms of damage. They will just mold their forms back into shape with a swipe of their hand. Wow, um, how did they get rid of them then? That's That sounds unbeatable. Well, apparently, uh, star warriors descended from above and hunted the hunters, burning them back into the ground with holy fire. Oh. And so he thanked the queen for her story, uh, took a sketch of the hand, and left. Uh, years later, just kind of seeing it as unremarkable because it was obviously a clay hand, Mm -hmm. um, he went to a library containing the details of the White Scars Astartes chapter. And one of the oldest manuscripts was about a race of Xenos giants called the Mordheim that had Earth-like flesh able to absorb wounds with no ill effects. Uh, and he was like, oh my go. God. It wait, was real. It was real. The One Piece is real. The One Piece is real. And he spoke to the head librarian asking him more information, but he said that single book was the only thing with no physical proof. So he packed the stuff up, tried to go back to where the queen was, but that planet was now fully in the throes of uh, terraformation, and she had since departed. <sighs> but it definitely does track. The, the White Scars are known for their uh, trophy hunting, mm -hmm. the, their big game hunting. So it certainly does track with that kind of thing. Man, those things are so cool. I mean, I, I assume we're never going to get like a mini on it and it's never going to get expanded upon or anything. But God, those things are so rad. I would love to see like a, a fantasy mini around them because, man, fantasy minis like the AOS minis would do that thing proper justice. Yeah, the AOS minis are really good. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a wacky looking doodad, but it's really cool. Oh, I love it. Very so, cool. Next one we have is something called the Clawed Fiend. The oh, I wonder if it has claws. It in fact does. It looks a little bit like, it's kind of just another one of those gorilla kind of looking ones. Mm -hmm. um, they're a bi ape-like biped with huge strength, got a barbed tail. It's a pretty classic apex predator um, in every way. Like it, it's a little bit unremarkable. It's just a big gorilla kind of creature. Oh, yeah. I um, mean, I'm sure facing one would be absolutely terrible. But, yeah, that drawing is just kind of, it seems a little goofy. It is a little goofy. The the, fa yeah. the, the face mask looks a little goofy. Um, the yeah. interesting thing about it, however, is that it has a bunch of octochromatic eyes that oh. have uh, light receptors that can perceive color past what humans can. Okay. And so it was rather, it was very fascinating. So Drake was very curious to get one. Um, of course. And so, you know, the rattlings of Rain and Rouse were not the most impressive of individuals, but they often acted as guides to the Blackstone Fortress uh, in order to help if anything happens. And so they were about to leave with a different road trader, a gentleman named Augustus Arova. And Arova was braving the fortress with the specific intention of hunting this beast because the pelts of this beast are worth more than some spacecraft. Wow. It really? is they are just giant crazy beasts and those and hunting one down as a rarity as they are is just, you know, very very nice. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was just like, "Oh yeah, the blue pelt is 
offers divine protection or something, or if it was just like, oh yeah, you killed the big crazy ape thing with the spike tail and hooray. You know, Shy, you keep, I, I didn't realize how many of these things were Drukari usable. Yeah, it seems like a lot of these are just like, oh yeah, if you run Drukari, you can absolutely run the mini of it, which, oof. That's actually kind of crazy. Um, Cause I know, I know you can run like a, you run them called like a beast master is kind of their name. Um, and the beast master can carry lots of different kinds of things uh, like razor wing flocks and stuff. Oh yeah, there it is. Claude fiends. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Huh. God damn. I did not. I did not realize that. I'm assuming you've never seen anybody run these uh, specific beasts since you didn't realize they were minis. Uh, I did not. Um, Probably not a super popular choice among uh, Drukari players. That being said, they are very fast. Uh, they are not that tanky, but they uh, do, in fact, hit at the exact same damage as a Chaos Space Marine possessed. Um, wow. That's which, a. That's a heavy hit. I mean, you know, give it game stuff, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But still, that's, but still, that's, a, that's a chunky monkey. And, uh, not bad. All right, that one's good. That one's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, Arova, the, the rogue trader, uh, obviously was going for the, the pelt. And before they disembarked, the two ratlings came up to him and said, Hey, uh, if you give us more money, we'll ditch this guy <laughs> and, and we'll do it for you instead. <laughs> And Arova apparently seemed like a decent man, so uh, he, Drake did, had no interest in derailing his expedition, but he said, hey, if you find me one of the fiend's eyes, because he wants to study the fact that they can see past the human spectrum of light, mm -hmm. um, if, you want, uh, if you can give me one of the eyes, I will <clears throat> match the fee for Arova that they promised for the pelt. And uh -huh. said their grubby faces lit up at this, and they promised in an absurdly profuse way not to fail me. Okay, um, cool, cool. Did they get him the eye? So he didn't expect to hear them uh, from them again, considering everything. But eventually, <laughs> yeah. they came back looking just awful um, and untrustworthy <laughs> as ever and gave him a jar full of gloopy, cloudy solution uh, that they could barely even tell that it was an eye. He spent a okay. few days carefully <laughs> cleaning it and attempting to dissect it. Uh, through it, and the eye had obviously been damaged by the creature's violent death. There were lesions in the cornea, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. But he was excited to see that it had two retinas. It's like, oh. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Might be part of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So he made his way back to Precipice, and heading through an auditorium, he came <clears> across <throat> the rogue trader Arova, Arova, and he looked crestfallen and defeated. <laughs> um, not much like a man who had just bagged himself a pelt worth <laughs> yeah. of ship. <clears throat> Uh, and he's, he stopped to compliment him on his success, and he shook his head, saying the expedition was a disaster. He had managed to wound the monster, but once it caught the scent of its own blood, it grew shockingly berserk, and nothing could stop it. Ironically, in-game, it gains more attacks if it's taken any damage. Okay. Um, it butchered his entire entourage and killed oh. even his younger brother as well. Oh, man. And the only re reason they were able to get away is because the Blackstone Fortress did one of its shifts... And they were moved to the side. Uh, he oh, was so lost. They got for, real lucky. Yes, he was lost for several hours before he managed to make his way back to the lander. At one point, he even passed near the scene of the massacre and came within a few feet of his brother's course. He grimaced oh. at the memory, appalled and baffled by the fact that someone had gouged the man's eyes out. Oh, I was about to say, if this thing went berserk, how how did they get the eyes? Oh, <laughs> they just they, they take an expedition <laughs> with this rogue trader. His brother dies. They just shank an eye out of him. And he's like, here you go, boss. How are you going to know that this isn't the thing? <laughs> oh, oh, you vaude villains. Oh, goodness. oh you. That's, I love those that's, guys. That's actually great. I love that. <laughs> I mean, I don't love it for the dude's brother, but that, that makes for a great story. It does. So the next one is something <clears throat> called the Sepulchrali. S-E-P-O-L? Sepul? C-R-A-L-I. Sepulchrali. Okay. Uh, these are a wacky one. They had a crazy picture when I was flipping through the book that I had to know what it was. Right. Um, though I don't think the picture is, is necessarily correct. Um, it's a bit weird, uh, but... Regardless, uh, basically, in when he was at Precipice, there was a Militarm officer from the Varun 12th who was drinking himself to death. <laughs> 
All right. Cool. Whoa! Is that the, what? What is that? Exactly. That's exactly the vibe I had when I first saw the thing. It's like a. It's like a. I. I. I'm sorry to anime you. It looks but like it a looks Titan. Like, I know. Yeah. Exactly. With like the funky way that they run. Yep. It, I, that's the first thing I thought of too. It, it, the Titan is a very striking image. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, they had told Drake that they were in fact insane. And their time on the planet of Thermia 5 had robbed them of reason. Uh, basically, this place, Thermia 5, is a death world, an ash-covered death world. Mm -hmm. And it was used often for mass burials over the centuries. And there were this old local concept of ash worms, crazed spirits that inhabited this world. Obviously dismissed originally as a uh, folk tale. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, their patrols came under attack, and they, they were so overwhelming that they had to be evacuated under escort of an Adeptus Astartes strike force, uh, which apparently was the Blood Angels chapter, uh, and it's they weren't actually Angels. even there to save them. They just happened to be in the area. <laughs> okay. Uh, because Again, another big stroke of luck. Yeah, like why would they even bother helping the regiment? Yeah, you know? they, who gives a shit? Um, and what would happen is that this creature roll, it looked like ash, rolling and twisting in the air like a tornado. But as they came closer, they could see they, they were actual animals, living things made of dust, coiling like a snake and flying through the air. And they were so incredibly fast that you could not outrun them. And when someone would scream in terror, they would flood into said person's mouth, and that was it. Oh, no. Oh, gross. The death of a single squad mate from screaming uh, killed all of them because once it, that happened, he was no longer him, but rather became this ash monster and would begin to attack all of his friends. And then when they would scream, then the ash worms would go into their mouth and so on and so on oh, and so on. Oh, man, that's terrible. That is an uh, like, how do you even fight that? You don't. <laughs> you do, Yeah, it's just, it's an ash cloud. Babe. It's like, it's an ash cloud in the shape of a person, right? And it's just like, oh, man, that sucks. That is. Uh... So he was the only surviving member of his squad. And he be then began, began to become less coherent and began scratching at his skin violently, trying to rid himself of imaginary attackers. Uh, I mean, I, I can see how... That's the kind of crazy you would fall into after seeing that. Yeah. That's yeah. marked that planet for exterminatus, by the way. That is. Get rid of that one. <laughs> Get rid of it. We don't need anything on that planet. Or better yet, have someone else go there. Throw in some, like, orcs. Have them try to deal with it. <laughs> Send a prison ship there. Yeah. So the next one we have is something called the Zote. Why does that sound familiar? Because it is familiar. The Zote, I think, was a model way back in the, in the day. Okay. But I believe that they remade the model just recently. Um, it is a centaur-like reptile oh. that liked to travel the galaxy in secret, not linked to a homeworld or a creed, very muscular, quite large, uh, and may appear like a mindless predator, but certainly are not. The Zotes. Oh, we totally talked about these. This mini looks so familiar. That picture, we have talked about these before. We definitely have talked about these before. I don't remember when it was or what the context was, but these beefy boys I have seen before. The uh, the Zote, the Zote kind of reminds me of the Shadow Broker. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, I can a, see it. I can kind of see it, yeah. Bit of a bizarre concept, but basically they are actually quite uh, intelligent and very, very conniving. However, when you say the word conniving, it might not actually be conniving. It might just be that Drake doesn't like him because he's uh, trying to do his own things. Yeah. Um, but is very intelligent. And a lot of Drake's informants have apparently been, quote, lost to the Zote, not from death, but apparently it seems to be making itself a building of spies and agents. Oh, so it really is going Shadow Broker. A little bit. It's creating its own network of agents, and it refers oh. to itself as the Archivist, because it does not speak either, 
it communicate uh, communicates entirely via telepathy through the mask on its face. Oh, cool. There's actually a hell of a lot more we can talk about Zotes, I think, in general, but there's not a whole lot specifically in this book. Mm. Um, we would need a lot more to discuss regarding the Zotes. But at the moment, yeah. like, the Zotes, like, it, it's... There's some people who really like Zotes. And, I mean, they're, they're cool. I think that mini is actually rather recent, too. What's up with his tum-tum? Why is it like that big red... Um, Ball thing? Thing, yeah. I'm actually not really sure. I, I thought that it might have something to do with his telepathy because you can see the line going to his mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I'm actually not sure. I have no idea. Oh, well, so be it. So be it. So be um, it. So I I have one in here that was called the Enslavers, but I forgot we already talked about them. They're like warp sharks that take over people's minds and turn them into portals and stuff. Oh, um, that's awful. That it's sucks. not great. Uh, that's an awful fate. That's a fate worse than death. But I want to talk about two more. Uh, do you want to end on the funny notes, or do you want to end on the serious then funny note? Ooh, I feel like per ridiculous, we need to end on the funny one. All right, then we'll do the non-funny one. Uh, the mm. Medusa or Medusa. Uh, this oh, is certainly these aren't Medusa-like creatures that have snakes for hair and turn you to stone, right? Uh, actually, not quite. No. Huh. Um, these are a manipulative mental parasite that oh. get onto your face and looks like a giant technically brain. Let, more so like, oh. like, a, like, like a brain version of Medusa's hair, not the snake version. Oh, gross. For, for some reason, I feel as if these might be a Drukari thing as well. They just look Drukari like Oh, these look so Drukari. Actually, that looks dope. Yeah, oh, that, that's the God, big... Oh, God, that looks so cool. So that big brain parasite that you're seeing right there uh -huh. is basically a... Um, it, well, it's a parasite, and it takes over a host of some kind. Mm -hmm. Now, the host itself uh, apparently is full memory of everything going on during this period of time. It oh. remembers it all. Oh, no, that's never good. It's It's not fun. Um, no. but it also throws them in a state of extremely heightened bliss. Oh, really? So it's not all bad when you get taken over by one of these things. Like, it's not like you're in, uh, unending suffering and you're just going absolutely loopy doopy. Like, at least you're in a state of bliss. Kind of like those other, um... Slimes that, like, uh, uh, we talked about in that last episode where, like, before they took you over, you're just totally euphoric, drugged out state? Uh, a little bit, yeah, except instead of killing you afterwards, this thing has you for a bit but can indeed be removed. Okay. And uh, okay. being able to... Oh, yeah, that's what it's called. Okay, it's the there's a thing called the Court of the Archon which is the name of uh, the Jukari. It lets you carry many things. Your ghoul, Medusa, um, the slith, which is like a, a sneaky thing, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, the Medusa uh, could have very a, easily been a Jukari episode. <laughs> it, it could have. I was actually unsure how many things had this much. I, yeah, my be. It's okay. Um, anywho, uh, the, the interesting thing about this is that there was a story way back when, of Drake as a young boy eating a beautiful dinner at, his, at the hall of his family. And it was some festival, and all of these people were proud imperial warriors or um, saints or all kinds of various types of things. But there was one man there who was just awful, a hunched, wasted figure, too frail to fit his formal attire, and muttered, obfuscated, barely seemed like he could follow through with everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was an issue where the Medusae, once removed, would often be seen as, like, that was their heightened world. And once it's gone, the world just feels gray and dull. Oh, so they actually almost go into, like, I don't want to say, like, sort of like a depression when they don't have that sort of blissed out state that the Medusae gave them. And everything just doesn't seem as good anymore. Kind of like yeah. Kind of like they're getting let down after a super big drug high, and now they're going through withdrawal, and they just can't handle it. It's about right. Um, oh, that's fucked up. 
So he noticed an arrangement of scars around this person's face and neck as if it had been punctured several times. And later, he asked his servants why the father would entertain such an unimposing man, and they laughed at his naivete and said that man was Dragomel, one of Terra's most beloved versifiers. He only wrote poems for one single year, but every single one of them had the power to bring readers to tears. Uh, and after that, he was never able to write again. So there's the assumption that maybe he willingly put this on his head so and wrote he for write one the year. Poetry. With such a, uh, yep. Oh. Is so are there any other examples of people maybe doing that? Or is it just him that um, willingly put this thing on them so that they could achieve that state? Completely unsure. Do not know. Uh, also, uh, just because Destiny 2 is such a regular, that'd be such a great warlock outfit. That's oh. a pretty cool warlock outfit. Yeah, I would agree. An exotic helmet for the warlocks that look like that? Oh, give it to me now. All right. Last but not least, we have the Galg. <laughs> the Galg. The Galg. The Galg. The Galg uh, lived in a world called Arumin and in palaces built deep, deep underground and illuminated by these bioluminescent spores. The Galg Ooh. is a giant, gross-looking tentacle blob. Oh, it is no. a big, oh, yeah, that's fleshy gross. tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> it has no heads, but they have their cluster of their weird, quote, optical appendages. Ew, okay. It was there uh, at the bar called the Helmsman in the drinking den. Just chilling. Uh, uh -huh. uh, and so apparently um, a Grek has heard of these Galogs before. And they went to go to the Galog's table and sat next to them. Uh -huh. And as they have no mouths, they produce some kind of whining moan as they moved their limbs, which apparently is oddly pleasant. A little huh. like the sound of a glass harmonium. And incredibly, huh. Grek was able to answer in kind. <laughs> opening really? his beak as wide as he could, tilting his head back and shaking the crest of spines that tops his head. <laughs> the galogs at the, the, the galogs at the table, because there are multiple galogs there, were excited to be addressed in their own tongue. And after some pleasantries, he was able to ask them questions on his behalf. Um, and that's how you learn about the palaces and stuff. They have this yeah. religion where they have this thing called the realm of the Maku, where if they uh, don't live a good life, they descend underneath their palaces and they die there uh, mm -hmm. with a malevolent species. <clears throat> um, the Galgs said that they had mostly an idyllic world that were unchanged, but they were excited by the arrival of the Tao Empire. Uh, oh, okay. And so rather than wasting their lives on these idle pleasures and peaceful pursuits, they now were lucky enough to have a place alongside the Tau in this great project to civilize and protect the galaxy. Ah, uh, they now serve the greater good. Uh, it was uh, apparently bizarre that their excitement was their excitement was so baffling. They've been dragged from a peaceful idol into a war that they're going to do about them, but they seemed ecstatic about it. <laughs> Okay. How do these things fight? Doesn't don't worry about it. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, like the Tau dragged them into the fight. Well, not dragged. They went willingly. It sounds like you'd think they'd have something. Like you know, if they touched you with their grimy blech, tentacles, they'd poison you or something. But it's like when Zaid was gonna be choked by a Hanar. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Shai said they use sonic weapons, according to the wiki. Oh, that makes sense, uh, because uh, they apparently they had more questions for Drek to ask when the Galg's mood soured, and they suddenly launched themselves at Grek and began trying to strangle him. Oh! Uh, one drew a gun-like weapon with their gentle musical whine, became an atonal scream. Uh, oh, okay. As said here, firing weapons on precipice, especially somewhere as visible as the Hellsman, can lead to exile and execution, so things would have gone pretty badly, for them, because they didn't want to fire their weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, several nearby drinkers stepped in to help me free Grek while another snatched the Galg's gun. The Galg stormed wow. out, and once the crowd dispersed, I asked Grek if he had known what had enraged them. He shook his head, and his tone was as neutral as ever. They asked me how I learned their language. 
And I explained that it was by eating their captain. <laughs> Enlight enlightenment flickered in his eyes. I don't think they knew he had died. <laughs> I like that. I was about to ask, why'd they suddenly fight? And well, there you go. They ate their captain. They he didn't even their realize their captain was dead yet. <laughs> yeah, they had no idea the captain was dead. It's like, oh, how'd you how'd you learn to talk to us? Oh yeah, killed your captain. Ate him. Ow. Now I can it's talk like, like you. John's <laughs> dead? <laughs> you bastard. What, what, oh, read what Shy just posted. Also, hilariously, Alpha Legion managed to serve to turn some of the Galg against Tau, organized as freedom fighters to overthrow Tau tyranny. How the hell did the Alpha Legion do that? Uh, subterfuge, deception, you know, uh, messing with the politics. You know how they go. <laughs> I, I, I guess, sure. You I know mean, it how the, they It's do. the Alpha Legion, so anything is possible. Absolutely. Anything is possible. Anyway, that was the one I was going to end it on, because that's so funny to me. That is that is a great finish. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Greg. Well, there there were probably like another ten or twelve more species in this book, but I think this was the good part to like really get through it and just kind of kind of end it there, throw it down there, yeah, and really really be pleased with the overarching um, nature of this book. It's a great great little tool for learning more about the overarching universe and some pretty great humor involving the nobility of Terra. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This was sort of a this was a pseudo uh, sub Drukari episode, too. We got to learn a lot about the weird creatures that apparently the Drukari can use and harness and stuff. Mm hmm. And it's creepy quite bastards. To see that, but yeah, creepy bastards. It <laughs> creepy is who they bastards. Are. <laughs> that is the Drukari. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will attempt to get to the Vash store book in time for next week. And if you don't, it sounds like there are a bunch of other Xenos you could do, maybe. Certainly possible. Mm-hmm. And how. All right. Thank you, everybody, very, very much for stopping by. Uh, and we will see you later. What? That, that's it? That's how you can end the episode? Well, how would you want to end it? Just very normally? I don't know. She talked about a giant tentacle monster, and I didn't say anything about culture. And I don't know. Should I end the episode before he starts? Yeah.